Uh, Caitlin Clark signed for was it twenty eight million there, Jay Stu? Is that it? Twenty eight million over eight years, or could be? I, I, it also says it could be worth up to eight twenty eight million dollars. Right, we have no idea the actual value of it. My guess is some of it's time to sale, tied to sales. My other guess is going to be that um, they'll probably put her in a really, really good shoe so that they can sell it a lot. Like this, the Sabrina, how do you pronounce it there? Uh, Inescu. Inescu. Inescu? Inescu? Yes. It's like a Y. Inescu. Yep. Okay. Her shoes are crazy popular, but really, in truth, I believe those are actually the Kyrie's. And so when they stopped doing business with Kyrie, they just moved those over to hers and they made them the team shoe. So it's inflated the sales, but it's a gigantic success as a shoe. So it could be up to 28 million. That's a lot of money. So or do we still think Nike's racist because they don't have a black woman with her own shoe yet? Black basketball player woman. Because that's what that's what social media thought, right? That to me is the most interesting part of this entire thing. I don't care about the shoe, what it looks like. I don't even care about how much she makes. I do like the fact that um, in the uh, wake of this being reported last week, someone put out a news report. I think it was a sporting news, and, and they had three pictures, and all three women that have signature shoes uh, from I think Puma, Adidas, and Nike are white. And uh, for some reason, that means that Nike is against uh, black people. Yes. Even though uh, Nike is synonymous with Tiger Woods, I know they're not in business anymore. Michael Jordan, um, Serena Williams, Venus Williams as well. Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, I, I just, I will tell you this. For the, the I use the term mob because it is, it becomes like a Twitter mob, mob mentality sort of thing. Not the mob, not the Italian. Hey, I not that mob, but to the Twitter mob out there, the point, this actually makes a great point, which is it is never enough. There's no amount that'll ever be enough. You have to, if you want in on that line of thinking, it has to be the first thing you think of every day. And every night before you go to bed and no one decision can be made without taking that into account. Right. And I listen, I understand if we go back 60, 70 and someplace even 40 years ago, there are parts of society which it's disgraceful how they treated people who their skin wasn't white. But we have gotten to a point where there is that it's like, how many times can you take out past vengeance on every white human being? Especially when a corporation, like, do they have their own issues with how the clothing and shoes are made overseas? Sure. Okay. But in an effort to, whether it's cover up for or make good on, I mean, remember, this is an organ based company that has supported every different part of women's rights, you know, women's rights or, uh, or, or even, you know, minority hiring practices, whatever. Like, literally, they have Nike is not someone who anyone's ever pointed at as going, like, hey, man, like, what's going on with Nike? And this is like the most obvious signing ever. 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 And I believe, and again, this is based upon reading. I don't know this from firsthand knowledge, like having talked to an agent about it. But the three players to have a signature shoe, right? One is Sabrina. One is Caitlin Clark. Who's the other one? Um, it's what's her name that played at UConn, won four national titles, right? Brianna Stewart? Is that who it was? Brianna Stewart, yeah. Brianna Stewart, I think, has a shoe with Puma. And the reason she has a shoe with Puma was Nike wasn't going to give her a signature shoe, so she left. Because here's a weird thing about Nike. They like to make money. And the other part that's really interesting is, um, how do you say, Aja Wilson? 
Asia, Asia, Asia Wilson, Asia. Yep. Asia Wilson, Asia Wilson doesn't have her own shoe, but she had her own shoe kind of color design on a shoe that's been out there. What does that feel like? That feels like dipping the toe into, hey, let's just see how popular she is. Are you guys familiar with uh, the Cactus Jack shoes? At all? I'm not. Anybody? Because Travis Scott has his own shoes, right? But they're version of Nikes. Right? And the reason that he has his own version of Nikes that are tailor-made and specifically, and they, they are up to $1,000 a pair. Do you know why? Because they sell. Hey, okay? Because they sell. And we talked about this Monday, or we talked about this last week, and we'll talk about it forever. Right? If Nike can sell Asia Wilson's shoes and get a return and an increase on shoe sales that I think I think 12% is their minimum. At 12% per year, they will they will design her shoes because that covers all the marketing, the R&D, everything that takes place. If they don't, they won't. We do this in every other business. It's like why did the Longhorn Network fail? You know why Longhorn Network failed? Well, they did a study, and the study showed that the Big 12 did not have enough people to watch their games on TV. They couldn't form a network. And they, the, the research showed that the only two brands in that league that could together form a network were Texas and Texas A&M. Well, A&M left and went to the SEC, so Texas tried to have one by themselves, and guess what it did? It failed. And the same thing happened with the Pac-12. That's why they had all those dumb regional networks because everyone said like, this won't work as one network. There's just not enough people that care enough about all the Olympic sports and the football. And guess what? It, it worked for a period of time, and, but it didn't generate enough buzz and enough money. And that's why it's going away. Here's the biggest problem. We have non-business people making, trying to say that businesses are making decisions about something that has nothing to do with business.